What's up YouTube and welcome back to a new video. Today is going to be a little bit more technical as we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to learn how to use an effector to displace some areas of a shape and we're going to leverage the data we just created in order to mix some materials together. Before starting, don't forget to like, subscribe and add a comment to the video. It's always appreciated. Let's go. Let's start by creating a donut. Shift A, Mesh, and Torus. In the settings, I'm going to increase the size, minor radius, maybe 0.5, and I'm going to increase the major radius to 1.5. I'm going to add more minor segments as well as major segments. 64 in both looks pretty good. Right click, Shade Smooth, Modifiers, Sub D modifier. Let's take a look. It's very dense. Maybe one. Select the donut RX90 to rotate 90 degrees. And we're going to create a NURBS circle. Shift A, curve, NURBS circle. And we are going to align into the donut RX90. And we're going to scale that. I'm going to go into X ray mode. S1.5 should be good enough. Rename sync donut. We're going to create another torus, shift A, S, mesh, torus. This time we're going to make it low poly, so maybe 16 here. And we're going to make it smaller so it fits around our original torus. Let's start with those numbers, 0.5 and 0.1. And we're going to move it to the side, scale it so it works for what we want to do. Let's subdivide the small torus by one is fine. We're going to apply scale and we're going to reset this location. Now we're going to try to make the smallest torus go around the biggest torus. And for that, we're going to use something called follow path. I'm going to rename the smallest torus effector one. With the effector one selected, I'm going to go into the object constraint. This is this tab. And I'm going to click on follow path. On the path target, I'm going to choose the nerve circle. I'm going to click on animate. And now if I hit play, my donut is going to follow my path, which is exactly what we want. And we're only going to need 99 frames. So I'm going to end my animation at 99 because then it will loop. The torus is actually not oriented in the right way. So just select the torus and click on follow curve. Then R Z 90. Let's play it again. Beautiful. The concept is the smallest torus is going to go around and it's going to paint some data on the biggest torus. Then we're going to leverage this data to displace the biggest torus as well as mixing material. This one is going to paint, but we're going to need another one that is erasing the paint. So the influence will only be somewhere. Let's take a look. I'm going to disable the floor. This is kind of annoying as well as the axis. I don't need that. I'm going to click on the first torus, the biggest one. And in the modifiers, I'm going to add a dynamic paint. To see the settings, I need to go to the physics tab. I'm going to use that as a canvas. I'm going to add a canvas. And instead of paint, I'm going to click on weight. Now we're going to use the smallest torus, the effector, and we're going to do the same thing. This time it's going to be a brush. So we're going to use that torus to brush some paint around the biggest torus. I'm going to add a brush. And instead of the mesh volume, I'm going to use proximity. The last thing we're going to do on this tab, but it's very important, is in the output, click on this plus here. So this is going to create a vertex group for that paint. If we want to preview our work, let's go to weight paints and hit play. And we can see the first torus is painting the biggest torus. If I want my animation to loop, I'm going to need one more torus to actually erase the paint around. Go back to object mode, select the effector one, copy paste. I'm going to delete the second nerves because I don't really need it. But in the follow path, I will target the first one. And I'm going to call this one effector number two. In the dynamic tab, we're going to hit Erase Paint. So hop over Object Constraint Properties and let's use Offset. That is going to be really helpful for us. 
maybe something like seven. Select the big torus, go back to weight paint and hit play. And now we have the desired effect. The first ring is painting and the second ring is erasing. Go back to object mode. I can hide my effectors. The first part of this tutorial is done. We created effectors to store some useful data. Let's use this by selecting the biggest donut, go to the modifier and add a displace. Click on new. Now you can select your vertex group, go to the texture properties, and that's where the second part of the work will happen. Feel free to play around with all of the displace types available here. I'm gonna use some clouds, 0.3. And you can play with the strength, more or less, maybe 0.8. And you can do that as many times as you want. I'm going to add another displace. I'm going to create a new texture. I'm going to use the same vertex group. And we're basically stacking displacement on top of displacement. Texture properties, clouds looks cool. 0.8. And I'm going to add a sub D to smooth things out. Let's hit play and this creates this very cool organic look. I almost want to go a little bit crazy on this one, so let's try that. I'm gonna add another displace, choosing my DP weight, add a new texture, texture properties. Let's play with the strength. Let's preview this. We're done with the second part of the tutorial, we just leverage all of the data created in the part one and we use that data to displace. We're gonna do one more step to leverage the vertex data in the shader editor. I'm gonna open a small window here and go to geometry nodes. I'm gonna click on my first torus and I'm gonna hit new. It's a very simple setup. We're gonna shift A, S, capture attributes. I'm gonna put that here, geometry to geometry and we're gonna add another one for the value. In the control panel, we're going to click on that button and we're going to use DP weight and we're going to move that to another attribute called weight. And now we're really done and we can move on to the next phase, which is the material. I can close that panel and we can open this one, click on the torus, hit new material and we're going to call this one Mega Donut. I'm going to move this material here. I'm going to shift A, S, attribute. In this field here, I'm going to type weight. I go to viewport shading and control shift click on that node. And this is exactly what we're going to need in order to have two different materials. Shift A, S, mix shader. So we can plug that as the factor. We can plug our first material here. For the second material, I'm going to use Addy's latest glass shader. I will put a link in the description. Open the Blender file, click on the cylindery mesh, Control C, go back to your scene, Control V, delete the object you just imported by right clicking, delete the hierarchy, click on the donut, in the material, click on this first glass number two, zoom out, copy the node, go back to the mega donut, material, paste, and input that as the second shader. The preview looks like nothing, so let's add some lights. I usually use HDRIs to make it easier for everyone to follow along, but this time let's use some area lights. Control A, lights, area light. I'm gonna speed up the video a little bit. I'm just gonna create a very simple three point light system. I want to make sure my background is transparent so I can put any color I want. So I'm going to go back to render properties and in film, I'm going to click on transparent. So the glass material is pretty much okay and ready to go, but I want to work on the second material and make that a little bit more plasticky and introduce some interesting colors. I want to start adding some bumps, shift A, S, bump, I'm going to plug that to the normal. I'm going to use a brick texture to drive the bump color to the height. I'm going to click on Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, and I'm going to plug that to UV. Let's tweak that a little bit. I'm going to turn that to white, 
here are the numbers that I'm happy with. I had to play around a little bit. Offset zero, frequency two, squash zero, frequency two, color one is white, color two is white, motor is black. Scale is 60, motor size is 0.02, motor smoothness is 0.1, bias is zero, brick width is 0.1, and row height is 0.2. Another thing I wanna tweak is the attribute color because it doesn't really output black or white. So I'm gonna add a U saturation, U saturation node, and I'm gonna increase the value to two. Let's finalize the first material and by adding some interesting colors to it. Shift A S color ramp. Plug that to the base color. Add a noise. Plug that to the factor. Instead of linear, I'm going to switch to constant. And now I have a really interesting noise coming up. If you want to animate your noise, let's switch to 4D in case that's something you're interested with. So you can play with that value. On the scale, 2.5 details, it's a little bit too much. So I just want to go down to absolutely zero. Roughness to one and distortion to maybe 0.1. Now let's work on the cool colors. Maybe some pink, maybe some red, yellow, light blue, some green, maybe dark green. We have some light blue, so maybe some dark blue. Click on the carrot and hit distribute from left. You can play with the scale as well as the W. So if I want to introduce more pink, I can just slide those things a little bit. Kind of dig the red, so let's move that. Reduce the scale and move the colors until you get to something you're happy with. I'm gonna speed up the video just to tweak the colors and I'll see you in a sec. So I reduced the roughness to 0.3 and in the bump node, I'm gonna click on invert. So I have holes, which I think looks 10 times better. So like the main donut, on the physics tab, cache, and bake old dynamics. Let's play a little bit with that glass shader. The setup is complete. Like in the previous video, I'm gonna create different camera angles. I'm gonna render those scenes and I'm gonna edit a small video. This is the moment where I'm gonna speed things up because it's mostly moving things. Thank you so much for following along. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and add a comment below. Always appreciate it. See you in the next one.